Hi, and welcome to this Alchemy Coffee Break session. This session's topic will be passing text files with Alchemy Catalyst. Um, so the agenda of today's session will be to have a look at the passing of text files with Alchemy Catalyst. And we will see that we have a very simple parser creation interface, so Catalyst will help you during the, different, the creation of a parser, and also that we support regular expression, which allows you to uh, handle any type of files you can receive. I think the easiest thing would be to start. Um, to start, let's have a look at the kind of file I'm talking about. Now this is a, a file called uh, id based file .wk1, so this is the extension. And as you can see, the, um, the syntax would be fairly typical of a resource bundle type text based file. What we have is we have an id mostly, most likely used by the software, and we have a value, uh, a text, a string. In our case, the string is uh, between in double quotes. Okay, so this is the kind of file I need to be able to handle with Catalyst. So to do that, I will take Catalyst and I will go, well, actually create a new project. I always prefer having a project created. And then we will have a look in the tools options, or we can use the little toolbar here in um, the button in the toolbar, sorry. We'll go into the easy pass section. And because we're dealing with text-based files, we are going to go into the text-based files group and the extension that we have. Now, obviously, uh, WK1 might not be the most common extension, so I can click on the uh, Add Extension button, type in my extension, and add it. Once it's been added, I will by default have a standard rule. Here we have a default rule, and I might decide to use this rule. So because I want to create or modify this rule, I will click on Edit Method and this will open the edit method dialog box. So if you have a quick look at the dialog box itself, it's um, basically split in two main areas. We have these two zone here, which is the parsing area, and then we have the preview and row view area here in the bottom. So how do we use this? The first thing we'll do is we'll open the file or a good representative file of our uh, format. This case, we'll just open the actual file. As soon as I open the file, I get the row view here to the left, and what Catalyst sees to the right. By default, because we haven't created any rules, we don't see anything to the right. How do we create rules? We go into the translatable strings here, and we define what is to the left and what is to the right of the string we want to translate. Now, these two sections, these two zones, these two areas, are able to take a regular expression. Now here, the simplest uh, parser for my file would be to use double quote. So if I say, well, look, it's a double quote, and at the right it's also a double quote, I can then click on the preview button. And the strings of my file have now been uh, isolated. So I could, if I was, say, doing a one-off job of I'm just doing one file once and I will never have it again, do this, pass the file, translate it, and give it back translated. Now, because we have here an option that says you leverage locks and memos using IDs, we would really like to be able to define an ID. If you can see, there is an ID defined, but it's been, it's a random, well, it's actually a, a auto-incrementing uh, integ uh, integer number, basically given to every string one after the other. So this is not really ideal, especially when we look at the file, we know that we have a file, you know, we have a string ID, we have an ID that is used by the program, so we should really try and use this as the leveraging ID. Now to create an ID, to, you know, use an ID or to use a piece of text or a piece of, a, a series of character as an ID, we need to have it inside our start tag. So to do that, we need to extend our regular expression so that it starts at the start of the line and then goes all the way to that double quote. So we have a cheat sheet, we can just right click here and then we can select things like the beginning of the line by example. Okay, that has to be followed by well, a series of characters read that's not an equal sign. So this is quite simple, I'm just going to type it in, we won't um, you know, go too long on regular expressions, however what I will show you is that if at any stage if I click on the preview you will see that the highlighting changes so in this case what we have because I've said I want to go all the way to the equal sign but not take the equal sign 
and the n tag is going to be a double quote, only the equal sign and the space are considered to be translatable. Now in this case what we're going to say, we're going to say well actually no, this, there should really be a space, an equal sign, a space, and then I want a double quote. And if I click on preview, you will see that the highlighting changes. So it's quite useful on occasions. You might have, you know, the first uh, attempt at creating a regular expression might not be just the one it, the, that's required, but the highlighting should show you uh, where the problems are. Okay, and here the last thing we need to do now that we have uh, the text of our ID inside that red bit, inside that start tag is we need to isolate this so we're just going to put brackets between everything that comes before the equal sign and if I click on preview I can now see that my IDs have been moved into my file okay so now that I have those IDs I am now ready to translate because I've selected this for this file format catalyst will not use the uh, IDs for leveraging locks and memos I click on OK and I have now created my rule for my text file, which means that from now on, every time I am faced with a WK1 file, what I need to do is right click on the project title, select insert file, point to the file, click on open, and my file is now available for translation. And I'm quite safe in the knowledge that leveraging and all of those operations will be done with the programmatic ID which should really only change, you know, if there is, I mean, we'll basically only, the text will change, but will always be the same string, most of case, except big exception. Anyway, so this kind of concludes our uh, little overview of the creation of a text file parser in Alchemy Catalyst. As conclusion, um, I would just, you know, point out the fact that we have that kind of simple passing interface where you just select the file, you get the raw view, once you start creating regular expressions you have a highlighting that shows you exactly which is what is selected what isn't. And also we do support regular expression and that is quite important because it will allow you well to define IDs first but also to make sure that you handle a very wide range of files. If the text, if you can uh, think of a logic, uh, logical expression to isolate the text. You can isolate the text in Catalyst and you can translate your file in Catalyst. If you have any further questions on the passing of text files or any uh, topics related to Catalyst, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at alchemysoftware.ie. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much for taking the time of attending this little session and have a nice day. Goodbye.